Tánis to the Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar announced yesterday that he is to resign and I want to reiterate my good wishes to him for the future and indeed I wished him the very best personally yesterday and acknowledged his years of public service. And as he said, all politicians are human and I also want to acknowledge that he has endured some awful abuse personally in his office as Taoiseach and I think we're all aware of that and I think we're also aware that it's become harder to enter politics and to stay in it due to the levels of toxicity in public yeah, debate and I acknowledge the Ciarán Corla's uh, role in trying to challenge that and indeed we have to all address that together but I think this should not deter us from criticising what is clearly a bad decision from government, a bad political decision to continue on in office uh, despite the Taoiseach's announcement yesterday. Because your government, Tánaiste, is out of ideas and it's lacking in focus, it's lacking in commitment and ambition and energy. Uh, it appears the decision that you and Minister Ryan have made is effectively to preserve the current government above all else, to preserve the term, indeed, as you've said, right to the end, to next March. But that decision puts puts the longevity of a Fine Gael-led government above the public interest. And it will be the second time that Fianna Fáil has done this. In the last all term, Brexit was the excuse you gave. This time around, it's an appeal for stability. But Tánaiste, the late in the day swapping of leadership is deeply destabilising when it's the leadership of the country. You may wish that wasn't so, but it is the case. And after two rotating Taoiseach in four years, with less than a year to go until the next general election must be held by this day next year, Fine Gael is proposing that it is their members who should choose a new, a new Taoiseach, not the people. And that, in our view, is wrong. It's against the democratic imperative. The Constitution may permit this act of political self-preservation, but it's absurd to say that this is really uh, in keeping with a democratic imperative. Tarnished as so much has happened since 2020. We've endured the pandemic. We've seen rents and house prices and ho child homelessness at record heights. Over 4,000 children now in homelessness. Horrific wars have broken out in the last four years due to the brutal, murderous policies of, of Vladimir Putin and Benjamin Netanyahu. And we've seen p so much has happened. There, and there are political solutions available to us. But your government is lacking now the focus and the energy to implement those solutions. You're clearly distracted, even more so now. Fine Gael is grappling with an exodus. Fianna Fáil and the Greens will apparently cling to a sinking ship, no matter what, it's, it, following yesterday. And it's having a serious effect on our policies, on our governance, at a time when people need politics to work. You've spoken about the planning bill, but you're rushing that important piece of legislation through. You're delaying important decisions. Well, that's, that's patently the case. That's patently the case. And you're rushing, uh, you're failing to make and delaying on important decisions like the introduction of state-owned accommodation for refugees and you're putting stays on opposition legislation to avoid having to deal with them. Stays that will last just beyond the term of the government. Only this month alone you allowed a Labour motion to pass without, on housing without saying anything about implementing it. Thank so you, Tanish, if you're setting your face against a general election, what are you going to do then to change your policies, to change the focus Thank of your you, government Deputy. over the, up, the next year, which is all that's left? Or are you just going to Thank allow a temporary Taoiseach to stand in and let this political stagnation continue? First of all, I appreciate your kind comments in respect of uh, the outgoing Taoiseach uh, and the comments that you've made in terms of abuse in politics and uh, toxicity in terms of uh, public discourse uh, in relation to politics. Uh, I would agree 100% with you in relation to that. I think we all collectively uh, have to address that issue because I think the most fundamental thing that we all should agree in this House is the freedom of expression freedom of association and freedom of mobility around our streets. Uh, even yesterday in the environments in Leinster House there were people trying to encroach upon and disrupt public service broadcasting uh, as a major news event was being in the house in, in neighbouring um, jurisdictions. These are serious issues for us in terms of the freedom of, of debate. Uh, but again Deputy, and I don't want to be overly, uh, you know, but you mentioned sinking ships, like you should be careful about referencing sinking ships in terms of politics and your own party will want to rise a bit more, I think, before you'll be lecturing others about sinking ships. I really mean that. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, but, so, so in, in any event, um, could, could I say to you that uh, the planning, the, 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 first of all, the planning bill, I think, should be completed. Uh, huge work has gone into it uh, in terms of its preparation. It's gone through pre legs and so on like that. That is a very important piece of work. Um, I, I see a judicial review recently somewhere in respect of a bus stop in terms of bus connects. Like, we, we need to streamline things. We need to make sure we have a planning system fit for purpose because we have enormous projects to deliver on offshore wind energy uh, in terms of housing 
uh, in terms of infrastructure more generally. Uh, in, ter in terms of housing, the first time buyer situation has improved significantly uh, under this government. The future fund bill uh, is very, very important. Why? Because that provides 0.8 per cent, or will if passed in this house, for future proofing pensions into the future, healthcare costs into the future, infrastructure into the future, and that we're putting money aside every year to create a fund that gets invested and the return from that will fund major challenges that we will all face in society into the future. I can't think of a more substantive and most important piece of legislation or an initiative as, as significant as this in many a decade. And huge work has gone into the preparation of that. It went through Cabinet yesterday. That needs to get through this House. So this isn't about shoring up or uh, clinging to anything. This is about a very proactive approach to getting policy done, getting initiatives delivered, getting infrastructure delivered, and getting on with the normal business of government, which I am doing and which we are doing, and every single minister um, is doing and will continue to do um, right through uh, to the lifetime, lifetime of, 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 of this government. And I think that's what the people want. People are not that impressed with politicians who keep on speculating about the next election. They're far more interested in delivery on matters of substance. Uh, we have made a lot of progress on housing. We have more to do. We've made a lot of progress on health care, with 60% now with access to a GP card, which is quite significant compared to where we were before thank this you. government Tarnished came into office. And I could go on and on in a range of whole lot of initiatives. Yes, thank you. Deputy Batchik. And answered my question. The Taoiseach said himself yesterday that there is a need to refocus policies. And you've, I, I agree with you, it is about delivery. But when are we going to see a refocusing of policies and a delivery? If you've set your face against a general election, if you and Minister Ryan are determined to keep uh, the, 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 the ship afloat, if you like, until uh, this time next year, then what are you going to offer people to change things? Because the Taoiseach's decision yesterday, as one constituent said to me last night, effectively was a vote of no confidence confidence in government, the ultimate vote of no confidence in government. So what are you going to do to give people confidence in your government then? How are you going to change things? Will you end, for example, cynical tactics that are currently in place in this parliament? And will you instead work with opposition to genuinely pass constructive, uh, constructive uh, legislation, like our bill on pregnancy loss, for example? Will you focus on rebuilding homes? Will you introduce new policies to see delivery of more homes? Will you end no-fault evictions? Will you end hospital emergency department chaos? Because the, the the, the, what you say on health must say rings hollow for those in, in emergency you, and at Limerick. And what will change, crucially, for people who are now struggling without a home, who can't pay their rent or their mortgage costs, who see overcrowded trolleys in hospital Thank emergency you, Deputy, departments, please, who can't access childcare or care for their elderly parents. What are you offering them and what will change over the next year if there's to be no general election? Well, I think already I said in the month of February alone, commencements are dramatically up. But dramatically up. That's change. That's added progress to progress already made. 33,000 houses last year, <coughs> and commencements up 85% uh, apparently, I understand, uh, in February uh, of this year compared to last year. That's progress, Deputy. And the Constitution is very clear. It's this Oireachtas that elects the Taoiseach of the day. Um, and there's been a, sort of a, an attempt to, not by you, to be fair, but by others, to suggest that, oh, it's a general election. General election elects parties and elects deputies. It's a majority of those deputies then elect the Taoiseach of the day once the, once the Doyle um, assembles. Um, and we have a proportional representation, multi-seat constituency system. Important point to make, because our constitution governs all of this. And I believe, and I've always believed this, um, and particularly since earlier periods of instability, that the government should go as close to full term as possible. And I've served in governments that have gone full term. And the result is you get better long-term policies, you get legislation done, uh, whereas if you Thank keep... You, you know, and, and I think I've already outlined to you the very serious piece of work we've underway. We want that done. We want that planning bill done. We want Thank the you. Uh, future fund bill done as well.